to a year of Hitchcock movies .com. We are your hosts, Jeff and Diane, and this is movie number 30 from 1949, Under Capricorn. And so this is the film that Alfred Hitchcock wanted to do first for his brand new production company called Transatlantic Pictures. Uh, it's just that they had to wait for Ingrid Bergman. She had a prior commitment, and so in the meantime they did last week's movie, Rope. Um, as mentioned, uh, Transatlantic Pictures uh, was the company that he formed with his friend Sidney Bernstein. We talked a little bit about him last week. And the idea was to film uh, movies both in Hollywood and the United Kingdom in London. Well, tonight's movie, they actually film in both Hollywood and the United Kingdom. Uh, most of it, all of the inside shots, all of them were done in London, in studios. and. Um, the exteriors were done in Hollywood because the weather was too bad in England to, uh, to film, so it, it, it kind of makes sense. Um, and it's also the first time that Alfred Hitchcock really spent any time back in England since he moved to Hollywood in 1938-39. And there was, a, there was, as we mentioned before, there was a little bit of that backlash that some people felt that he should have been in England during World War II instead of hiding in Hollywood, but I think we all agreed that his talents uh, as far as uh, war effort, were, were ideally suited in Hollywood, not in the United, uh, you know, not in, in England. So, uh, anyways, uh, so tonight's film is set in Australia, hence uh, under Capricorn, uh, particularly Sydney in in the 1850s or so, um, back when Australia was uh, largely a penal colony, uh, where uh, the the British took their their prisoners because I guess all their jails were full. Uh, starting pretty much 1787, 1788 thereabouts, uh, they, they, they made him go live in Australia. It didn't take much either. <laughs> he didn't have to be a murderer. And, and really, up until the mass immigration in uh, the 1850s, which I think was to do with the gold rush in Australia, um, most of the settlers in Sydney were, were convicts or the, uh, the progeny of, uh, of these convicts. So very interesting culture. Um, and we'll see it in tonight's film. So obviously this film takes place in the past and uh, the, the result is what we call a, a costume drama or a historical costume drama and we've seen this once before. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock did not make very many costume dramas really. He made this one, Jamaica Inn, which we all remember from 1939, and, uh, and a movie that we skipped called Waltz's from Vienna. We skipped it because it's not available on DVD yet. Still, it's not available. And both of those two movies were not successful. He didn't like either of them. He didn't enjoy the, the process. So uh, we'll see how uh, that works out tonight. Uh, our film is based on a book called Under Capricorn, which appeared in 1937, written by one Helen Simpson. And if you've got a great memory, you remember Helen Simpson because she wrote uh, what was the basis for Alfred Hitchcock's movie Murder from 1930. She wrote those uh, Sir John novels, Enter Sir John, and uh, was and his, his character was based in, on uh, the film Murder. Uh, Helen Simpson actually died in 1940, uh, so she didn't really get to see this film, but uh, she was born in Sydney, and I think her, her family was, was basically been there for 100 years, so I wonder if her descendants were, uh, or rather, her uh, families were convicts. Anyways, so... Uh, the adaptation, Hitchcock brought in Hume Cronin, which we saw from Rope. Uh, Hume Cronin, of course, uh, was the neighbor in Shadow of a Doubt, uh, who came over and talked about the best ways to commit a murder, and he also was featured more prominently in the movie Lifeboat. Well, they were real good friends, and so he, he wrote a lot of the dialogue for Rope, and he wrote uh, pretty much, uh, well, a lot of the dialogue in tonight's movie, so we'll see how that does. Also, uh, James Brighty was, was brought in to work on some of the plot. He did a little bit of uh, parody in case and uh, a little bit of next week's movie, Stage Fright. So, um, so who's in this thing? Well, obviously Ingrid Bergman's in it because we had to wait for her to be ready to, uh, to do this one. And we saw her in Spellbound with Gregory Peck and we saw her in Notorious with Cary Grant. Uh, unfortunately, this is the last Ingrid Bergman movie. Uh, that's tragic, isn't it? Because uh, we, we love Ingrid Bergman and, um, well, Alfred Hitchcock loved Ingrid Bergman. He really did. Um, and pretty much uh, right after this movie was, was filmed, uh, she ran off with the Italian film director, Roberto uh, Rossellini, and uh, that caused uh, quite a scandal with the public, because uh, people didn't like that sort of thing back then. 
And, uh, uh, you know, if I'm Alfred Hitchcock, I'm, I'm a little jealous because, you know, hey, Ingrid, if you're going to run out for the film director, because uh, he, he really did love her, and uh, that, that wasn't a, a good thing. But, uh, you know, obviously it worked out for Ingrid Bergman. I think they're very happy, and they gave us Isabella Rossellini, who, uh, if you're a child of the 70s and 80s, then you know her better than Ingrid Bergman. So, Joseph Cotton uh, is in this one. We loved him in Shadow of a Doubt. He was the bad guy. He was a serial killer in Shadow of a Doubt. Let's see what, what he is tonight. Um, he plays uh, Ingrid, Bergman, Ingrid Bergman's husband. They are living in Sydney. And uh, unfortunately as well, this is the last time we're going to see Joseph Cotton. Michael Wilding is in this. His character is a newcomer to Sydney. He's the nephew of the governor of New South Wales, so he's a, he's a big name. Uh, Michael Wilding, um, his character, he used to know in Bergman back in Ireland. You see they're all Irish. Uh, they're all ex-cons. Well, he isn't, but... Uh, and we'll see Michael Wilding again in next week's movie, Stage Fright. He plays a detective in next week's Stage Fright. Uh, Michael Wilding was the second of Elizabeth Taylor's seven or eight husbands, so that's kind of neat. And he actually uh, was married to one of the actresses in tonight's movie. Uh, her name is Margaret Lighton. She plays the housekeeper, and you'll know who she is. She has a pretty big role, kind of a Mrs. Danvers kind of role in tonight's movie. Well, they were married at some point, so uh, so yeah, sounds like a, sounds like a soap opera. Look for the long, continuous takes. Now, we're not doing what we did last week, where we're focusing on the back of a chair and then re-emerging, so you're not going to see that. But you'll notice there are some, uh, some very long uh, takes, and, and it's very interesting to, uh, to see. But again, uh, you know, it caused problems in rope. Uh, I can tell you it was very frustrating for Ingrid Bergman because, uh, you know, she would, she would get very frustrated. After two or three minutes, she might make a mistake. She was quite a perfectionist, a very serious actress and uh, we'll get very frustrated and, uh, you know, we'll see how that turns out. And, and bear in mind that they're all from Ireland, so let's see how their accents pan out. Ingrid Bergman, of course, with her Swedish accent, Joseph Cotton's New York, and Michael Wilding is English, so, or was English. So, uh, Ingrid Bergman uh, was, uh, we, we pointed out how much we liked her, uh, how she played someone who was drunk in Notorious at the beginning of that film. And uh, for what it's worth, in her main, her big entrance in this film, she's also drunk. And, um, you know, it's easy to overdo it. It's easy to look stupid when you're pretending to be drunk when you're acting in a movie. And, and uh, boy, she was sure good and notorious. So there's a cameo to look for. And I'm going to do the same thing I did in last week's rope. I'm not going to give it away until uh, sort of towards the end of this video. So if you don't want to know, then just shut me off. Um, so here we go. So this is, uh, this is a film that in 1958, uh, not, not quite 10 years later, uh, French film critics in their magazine called Cahier du Cinéma uh, named this uh, in the top 10 best films of all time. So let's see what the French know. So good, so from 1949, Alfred Hitchcock's Under Capricorn. Let's watch. And so now I'm gonna tell you where the cameo is. So again, if you don't wanna know, shut me off. Um, it, the, the, there's two. The, the real one occurs at exactly 13 minutes and 3 seconds. It's where they pull up at the governor's mansion with the pillars and he's one of three guys just standing in the, sort of in the doorway. And, and you have to look, but there he is, 13 minutes and 3 seconds. But about 3 minutes into it, um, you can see, I guess he's in a green jacket and a brown hat or a brown jacket or a green hat or something. You can see the back and there he is. You can't see his face, but you know, whatever, that's your cameo. So, so good, on with the show and uh, we'll see you at the end of the film.